Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video I want to discuss Top Series 2 and my thoughts on the set. Top Series 2 has come out, and I actually have not made a video on it yet. I was going to, but then things just happened, so I didn't. But I want to make a video on Top Series 2 now. I want to discuss the print runs, my thoughts on the rookie class, my thoughts on the parallels and inserts, everything in between, and let you know if I think it's a good set, a bad set, okay set, and so forth. So the very first thing I want to discuss is going to be the print runs. If you watch my channel, you know that I calculate the Hobby Box print runs through the clear cards. So if you're actually opening up a Hobby Box, you have a chance of pulling a clear acetate card, and those clear acetate cards are not number 10 it's the base card but it's like a clear version it's really a cool looking card and those are only available in hobby boxes because they're only available in one format and tops gives us the actual pack odds on the back of each pack we're able to relatively predict how many of each base card in a hobby box exists so if you look at this you can see how i did the math on all of this but the long and short of it is 2023 top series one has about 152,000 of each base card in that set so there's 152,000 of the the Rutschman rookie, 152,000 of the other rookie cards in the set, and the Mike Trout, and the Mookie Betts, and so forth. So that's basically what this tells us. This is not saying the other sets, like the Jumbo, the Retail, the Factory sets, other different people online have predicted it's over a million of each player. I think that's probably accurate. I just want to look at just the hobby boxes because we can figure this out. If we look at other sets, like 2014 Tops Update, in the hobby boxes, you would have about 18 to 20,000 of each player just in hobby boxes. And so you can see it's significantly higher since then, but I want to compare that to 2023 Top Series 2. I just want to show where it was at for the first set, and for this set, if you want to look at my math, you can, about 138,000 of each base card. One thing I want to note is I said there were 14 cards per pack. That's probably not accurate for base cards, probably around 12 or 13 because you usually get a parallel or insert or two inserts, but I said 14 just to make life easier. So it's probably about 10 to 15% lower than what my number actually states for both of the two sets I showed. So I just wanted to show that it looks like about 138,000 of each player, which is higher than it has been historically, but it's down since series one, which is a good thing. And there's other good things about series two compared to series one. I want to look at the print run. So this is going to be from Baseball Cardpedia. Thank you, Baseball Cardpedia, for providing all this data in one location for everybody. But I kind of cut and chose which ones I wanted to show. Here are the hobby odds, the jumbo odds, and the hanger odds for all of the numbered parallels. Same with Series 2. You'll see that it's a little bit longer because they added a blue foil and a purple foil to retail formats only. But if we look at the golds, this is a good thing to look at. You'll see if you were opening up a hobby box of top Series 1, you'd get a gold one in every 33 packs. If you're opening up a jumbo, it's one in four packs, and a hanger box it's one in 15 packs if we look at a gold in series two it's one in 18 hobby packs which is good you only get 24 hobby packs in a hobby box so you're not even getting one per hobby box in series one but you might get two in top series two one in five in jumbo and one in seven in hangers so the probability of pulling something decent out of hobby and hangers is significantly better and jumbo isn't quite as good jumbo is still a strong format but it's not quite as strong as where it was the next thing we can look at is something like the vintage stock. We can see again with series one, it was one every 696 packs in hobby. Now it's one every 363. It was one in 70 in jumbo. Now it's going to be one in 105 and it was one in 312 in hanger. And now it is going to be one in every 141. So you get the idea of how this is all shifted. We've never seen anything like what happened in series one where they loaded one type of product and kind of screwed everything else. But now it's kind of back to normality in series two. So I think that's a good thing. I know I kind of liked that hobby was treated differently. So there was more retail available for everybody, but I think they swung too far where there was way too much retail for everybody. So it is what it is. It's hard to appease everything and try to predict the markets. Maybe that was just an attempt to figure out what to do in the future. The rookie class is the next thing I want to point out. It's a really strong rookie class for, it's very top heavy, I'd say. If Corbin Carroll, who hit another home run today, today's Monday, and he is amazing. Him and Acuna are the clear one and two for the MVP currently. Then you have Jordan Walker, who has all the potential for power and average in the world. He just hasn't been a great defender. He moved from his natural position at third base to play different positions, which has hurt his D war. And you get the idea. You have Anthony Volpe, who who honestly has a really high ceiling as well. He was great in the minor leagues, just hasn't put it together in the big leagues, but he's like, what, 21 or 22? It's hard to do so. And then you have a great supporting cast around them. So here's just the example of some of the players. I'm not saying these are the best players in the set. I actually made a video on the very best players in the set if you want to watch that. But regardless, this will have one or two really great headlining players and everybody else, who knows what will happen. I don't think it's as strong as like 2018 Tops Update with 
Shohei Otani, Juan Soto, Ronald Acuna Jr., Gleyber Torres, Shane Bieber, and more. Uh, or 2011 Tops update with Mike Trout, Jose Altuve, Paul Goldschmidt, Charlie Blackman, J.D. Martinez, and more. But I do think it's a really strong rookie class compared to other years, and I think this will be the strongest rookie class in 2023. Series 1 had like Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, Riley Green. Tops update, I'm not sure who it will be. I just know for sure L.A. De La Cruz will not be in that set because he actually received a call-up designation on his Tops Now card when he debuted. If he would have actually received a rookie designation, that would have signified he'd be an update, but he will be pushed to 2024. So I, I want to say for sure this will be the best rookie class. I don't want to say it's a 10 out of 10. I would say if I was ranking this rookie class, it's probably a 7 to 7.5 out of 10. Next up are unique insert cards. So there are home field advantage cards again this year, just like there was in 2022. I personally like home field advantage cards. They haven't really had the giant spike like I thought they would. That's probably just because they're too common, but they're still a really cool, unique hard pull of a parallel. The heavy lumber is actually a very tough parallel to find. Here it is right here. It's like a wood grain stock. And then the golden mirror short prints, I think they make more sense than what the previous short prints were. And the reason for that is because every single player has a golden mirror short print. There's no super short prints or super, super, super short prints like we saw in previous years. Shohei Otani, Ronald Acuna Jr. won, so they all have multiple short prints and it just gets really confusing. Actually, Ronald Acuna Jr. in Tops Update has a short print, a super short print, and a super, super short print. Same with Otani. And it got confusing. So I'm okay with this. And it makes it a little bit tougher to find the players you would like because it's all 330 players have a short print, which I do like as well for player collectors. I do want to say though, previous short print collectors don't like this when series one came out. I'm not sure if they've gotten used to the idea, but either way, I think it's a good feature for these products. And one thing I want to point out, you'll see back here is 1990 Fleer, right? 1990 Fleer, that's what this uncut sheet is. Great, has Barry Bonds, has Ken Griffey Jr., has Randy Johnson, has Ozzie Smith, has, you know, great players on it, Craig Biggio. But if you're opening up a box of 1990 Flair, you're not going to get anything good, right? No matter what. It's just, you're just not going to get anything of value. These boxes are different nowadays. And I think the tops did a good job with like the super short prints, with the heavy lumber, with the home field advantage, with the parallels, with the autographs, with the relics, even though the print runs are really high. And they are really high, right? Just like 1990 Flair. The difference though is you can pull something of unique value out of this product compared to what it was like back then. And so I wouldn't get too disheartened with the increased print runs. Just enjoy it. Just don't open the product expecting to make much money because you probably won't nine times out of ten but it's still fun and that's the whole point of the hobby so let's look at some more print runs uh what i'm showing here is the exact same thing we saw before but i want to just show how many hobby boxes exist and again this is with the assumption there's 14 base cards per pack so i took the total number of base cards from the print run divided it by 14 because there's 14 of them per pack and then once i had the number of packs i divided that by 24 there's 24 packs in the hobby box for 135,000 hobby boxes how many cases about 11 or 12 12,000 cases, how many packs total, about 3.8 million, and heavy lumber is one in every 1,151 packs, and there are 20 cards on that checklist, which means, if you look at this math, there's about 165 heavy lumber cards in the hobby boxes per player. Not in the whole like heavy lumber across all of the print run, but just in hobby boxes. If you look at golden mirror short prints, or super short prints, I should say, while they are an easier pull, there's also 330 of them, which makes it so there's only about 25 golden mirror short prints of each player in the hobby boxes. And actually, according to sportscollectorsdaily.com, they claimed that Beckett said that there were 150 copies of each golden mirror image variation, which would align to hobby boxes. You know, it's actually relatively easier to pull one of those in jumbo and even in retail because there's so much retail printed. So I think that's actually probably pretty accurate and it wouldn't surprise me if it was a little bit higher a little bit lower but that's just something i wanted to show these inserts they are a tough pull if you get the right player there is upside in this product which is good the one thing i do hate uh personally is the new parallels and i like it for collectors who want to just open product and get cool cards out of the product that's great but if you're looking to like speculate on corbin carroll's rookie cards it makes it tougher because right here the blue foil boards are now retail only same with the purple foil boards these are numbered to $9.99, the purples are to $7.99, and that just makes it hard because there's so many of them along with these other numbered cards. If we look at the total numbered cards outside of golds, one of ones, and the complete set foil boards, you can't pull the complete set foil boards unless you buy a complete set box. I didn't include them. You can see Albert Pools had zero other numbered cards outside of the golds. Verlander had 54, that's what the black parallels were numbered in 2005. Kershaw had 107 with the black and a weird silk card numbered to 50. Trout had 120 with the black numbered to 60 and the Hope Diamond parallel numbered to 60 as well. And you see the idea, it increases every single year, but it was relatively consistent up through Ronald Acuna Jr. where if you pull the really rare parallel or a parallel of a card that's numbered in 
top series one, two or update, it held value. But now we're seeing with Wander and Corbin Carroll, it's just getting a little bit crazy. And now that we have this set and these like high numbered cards coming in, I feel like it devalues everything below. And you might say that's not true because people still want the rare old cards with continuity. I think it's harder because people will come in the hobby and there's just so many options they might not go for it. And on top of that, collectors might just decide to pick you know, the more common card because it's less expensive. So that's one thing I don't love about this set. So my takeaways, the formats are different in regards to what you're gonna pull out of hobby, retail, and jumbo. So just be aware of that. It might make your decision on what type of product you wanna buy. I know a series one, the jumbo was the best way to go, but now that's not the case. Hobby is great, retail is actually better as well. The print runs are down from series one, but are still high historically, like we already mentioned. But overall, that's just the hobby, how it's gonna be as it continues to be popular. Once the hobby declines, we'll probably see print runs decline, but that's a bad thing if it declines. The rookie class is good. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but there's two or three great players in there that are gonna be very heavily collected and their cards are able to be pulled out of packs relatively easily, which is great. So the hunt is there, plus the odds are better at pulling in parallel. So that is fun as well. And it's relatively deep. It's hard to say that when they haven't played very much. But there's a lot of players with upside that aren't in the top three players. Also, the inserts are above average and I like the short prints. I wouldn't say they're amazing. I actually liked in series one how you had the hidden gems, tops, chrome cards that were like one in every 100,000 packs. I liked that, uh, but that's not in this set, but still, it's still a really decent in insert and parallels on the checklist. But I do want to point out the parallels have been watered down in comparison to previous years which I don't love. So overall, those are my thoughts on top series two. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below if you like this, if you like what they've done, or if you would change anything, and I will see you in the next video.